Hey, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are kicking some butt. We're back. I'm on uh, Planet Arcadia, as I said. As you can tell, I'm at the Celestial Quarry. Um, today, just like I said, I'm going to kind of show you guys around. These are the stalls I'm always talking about, how I would... You know, I kind of, in theory, want one of these, but in all honesty, everybody I know owns one of these, and I don't want to be in some kind of competitive um, market space against a bunch of people I know. We'll wait till this one generates. Make sure. Oh, Geo. He's definitely going to be. That's going to have stuff in it. Let's see what's in here. Um, I'm going to be running a 1.5K run of... Um, generic leather texture that's going to allow us to generate a crap ton of blueprints in theory off of planet arcadia now we just did this exact thing on planet um, calypso then on planet cyrene of course this is going to be the planet arcadia run next i'm going to be and not you know, next stream. I'm right now on this planet, right? Next, I'll be on Next Island. That'll be fascinating. I'm going to check out the planets on top of it. We're not just doing streams for stuff. Obviously, you can get all your mothership and needs and stuff like that here. I don't know what's in these guys. Let's check this out. Buzz Lightyear. What's up with that? Buzz Lightyear, by the way, he's a cool guy. I don't know him personally. He owns Crystal Palace or, you know, did own Crystal Palace. Pretty much does own Crystal Palace. Um, Buzz, what the frick is going on, bud? I don't know what's going on. Well. Okay, well, I don't know what's going on here, guys. It's a little bit confusing. Buzz Lightyear's usually on stuff. He has shops up on Crystal Palace. I didn't even know he had a thing over here. Okay, so it looks like there's a lot of people over on this side crafting. I'm going to go see if there's a crafting station over here with less people. Nothing against those people. They're all great people, I'm sure. I'm going to heal this girl. Is that the right thing? Yeah. I have multiple chips, so it gets confusing sometimes. And when I see a low number, I'm like, what did I just do? This girl has some freaking life. Did you guys see this? Yeah. Crap and A. Okay. We're ready to do this. Oh, she has the, the crown we want. Holy crap, I'm going to get on that, guys. Um, I didn't even get up chat yet. I am going to get up chat. I'm going to get this going first, though. Hold on one second. So let me make sure we have zero blueprints. I just landed on this planet, so the odds are we don't. So no blueprints. Obviously, I have a book that was from the last planet. I'll sell it, grab us a new book. Um. Because I'm going to put these into our character at the end of the crafting run. Just so you guys know, 1.5 clicks, I mean, 1.5k clicks of a blueprint is about two hours. So this is going to be a two hour run, just so you guys know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Like with all crafting runs, I'm going to disappear my face, but I'm going to be sat here. Every time a blueprint pops, I'm going to go over it, especially since we haven't seen all the blueprints on this planet. In reality, I'm likely to only get like three blueprints per 500 clicky clicks. So that's like nine blueprints. A really good run is like if you got five per 500 clicky clicks, like 15 and 1500 uh, blueprints that's insane that's epic and so let's think we're gonna get about nine blueprints maybe more maybe less who knows right 
Um, I hope you guys are having great mojo in your own game and kicking butt. If you want to, shoot some positive mojo my way. I hope you global big today, though, by the way. And I'm going to get this going. Okay. Get our video down. And we are off. I'm going to have chat up in one second so I can see exactly what's going on. I'm also going to set that like that. I changed my layout, and so I don't have the same everything set up the same way. Because I got a new little desk, and in all honesty, uh, I'm still getting used to where things are. Absolutely not used to it yet, though. And the overall slipperiness of my desk kind of threw me off a little bit, too. Okay, so we're, we're off and we're going. By the way, this is a 100% generic leather texture blueprint um, quality. Wise. Uh, overall, I have great luck on this. Let's look at what else would be relevant, guys. I have texturing skills somewhere in here. All right, is pyrokinetics our top skill? Guys. Engineering has been my top skill for years. This is insanity. I would never have guessed that something was going to top my engineering. I don't know what's going on with that. That's insane. Kind of makes me a little bit happy somehow. Okay, let's wait. As soon as Blueprint pops, I'll talk. And uh, outside of that, let's just let this go. By the way, at the end, I'm going to go over all the blueprints and stuff, and we're going to check the statistics. I'm going to let you guys know that with markup and everything on this run, it's a 120-ped run. Okay? I didn't actually pay that much in markup, but, you know, that is like if you average the markup and, like, had to pay the, the normal price, that, that would be it.
Okay, so right here we've got our first blueprint. I'll check to see if I already have this at the end. I believe I already have this blueprint, by the way, guys. There's like 27 of them sold this year for like somewhere between two to three pet is what, you know what I'm saying? And so, obviously that's one we could throw in for a couple pad and we'd likely get our money. That's a good thing, right? I think I already have it. I actually don't know for sure though. But I know what those are and I have seen them before. I think they're like somewhere down in this area actually though. I'm going to be codexing this planet, by the way, while we're here. This is not just... By the way, you get this canvas on almost every planet. And this sells pretty fast. Or you could just craft it and uh, I don't know, use it. Uh, tons of different options there. We started off so strong with two right off the bat before 100 that I just was like, maybe it's just going to keep going like that. Yeah. It's still, oh, boom, look at that. Oh, I do have this one, this Midas tree one. You guys look at this one. This is a good one, though. Check this. I don't even remember why I like this one. I, 
I think there was some basic reason. You have to have this Midas tree veneer, which honestly you have to Google to figure out how to make that crap. Um, but everything else is very easy in this. And that's wood texture here. At the end of this, we can look at all these, just so you guys know. Uh, let's see what what we'll get out of this. Uh, that's not that exciting. So a Laguna one is a common one. That's actually though a really good hit though, if you guys think about it, because we're what spending eight peck per click or something like that. We got six. Yeah, that's what we're spending. And so that's a massive, massive amount. Honestly, that's that's really good. So we're we're doing pretty good BP wise. Two hundred clicks and we're at four blueprints, guys.
Okay, so we got some grooved metal. That's not worth a ton. But I get it pretty often. In a big stack, this will sell, though, just so you guys know. Okay, now that's also a common one. We get that on Planet Calypso. So that's kind of a universal one. We save up a big enough stack of those, those sell. But you got to have them in big stacks. So we're killing it on us. Hey, thank you very much, by the way. So blueprint-wise, we're doing really well. Because, you know, how I told you about three per 500 clicks. Obviously, we're only 300 clicks in. We're at six blueprint drops. Honestly, that's impressive. I don't know how well we're going to do. Now, that doesn't mean we're breaking even. I'm just like blueprint drop wise, it looks good. We know the run cost us 120 ped though. And I'll look at that at the end. And, and so we'll know more or less what happened by then.
Okay, so we got another blueprint. This is a common blueprint. I for sure already have this one. Uh, we could probably get one pet out of it. I'd probably TT it, to be honest, though. Like, it could sell if we were back on Calypso, but it might not. And it's probably not really worth the whole... A ton of effort put into it. So I'd probably just TT that one. Hey, thank you very much. By the way, we got some more Amatrax. Amatrax. Honestly, this one will sell. I mean, Amblimax. I apologize. And then, Sopra is a very common one. This would probably sell, but... I mixed bag. This, this is a good one to run, though, by the way. If you guys don't have this one, this is an excellent blueprint. Like... I run this on planets. I've had good success with it, just like this other one. It's a little expensive to run compared to like Burkite or something like that. But straight up, this is this is super good. But yeah, I consider this is an amazing run right now. We're less than 500 clickies in, and we've got nine blueprints. I was expecting nine blueprints the whole run. So maybe maybe we're just having an amazing day today. We are actually. I am having an amazing day today. I hope you guys are too, by the way. But yeah, the positive mojo is probably kicking some butt. Or maybe I should just be running generic leather blueprints on Arcadia more often than I do. Is what I'm also starting to wonder. This is a lot of blueprints per, per clicky click, guys. Like, straight up, I, I consider this super, super good. If it holds up the whole way through, 
that'll that'll be a little bit even more impressive. And so, but it costs about 120 um, pad to do a run this big, which isn't that big of a deal, you know what I mean? See how absolutely friendly people are in this game, though? I'm not really who, sure who else is over there visiting, but... This is absolutely a pleasantly friendly game most of the time, just so you guys know. So you're after the egg, huh? How are you trying to get the egg? Just, just so, because I'm not trying to get an egg. I'm gonna just be honest, you guys. How, how exactly? I haven't looked into it that much, but I am wishing you luck. 
Is is this that affiliate egg? Is that what you're talking about? Because honestly, I have not looked into the egg thing for those that much. Because I felt that everybody was going to be doing serious, serious stuff uh, to get them. And I didn't look into it because I was like, "Whoa, I'm I'm more casual than the Enigma key eggs." Okay, yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. Okay, wait. Let me. Corona at Port Atlantis. Oh, never mind. Whoa, I. You know what? That's not the same thing. But I do get what you're saying. I need to finish that. Holy crap. Okay, so when I get all the way back, I need to actually remember that I'm doing that. I keep forgetting. I think we just got the fern texture. We already have that today. Well, we got another wood texture. Ferns, that's probably a cool texture. We'll look at it when we're done. Oh, but I already have that one. I keep on forgetting about the Port Atlantis Corona mission every time I'm back. And I'm working on it. I just space it out, in all honesty, which is kind of naughty. But we're working on it. How long have you been attempting? Oh, wait. Six days in a row, huh? That, that seems excessive. I don't feel it should be that hard to get six days in a row without getting it. It would make me annoyed. I mean, I don't know how rare is it because that's not a... Oh, okay. Yeah. It sounds like it's kind of being a challenge. I have not put a lot of push on it, any of that stuff. Oh. So it's a serious commitment then. It's not a... Okay, so I don't have to feel like I'm blowing it off. I can just feel like we're casually approaching it. And turn it into a 20-year thing, obviously. I'm okay with that, you guys. Okay, so we got some Prancer. This this is my cell. I threw it in there at that. Nobody bit it up. Um, so I don't know what I would do this time. If I would just TTM or just wait till we're higher level and just make them ourselves, to be honest, guys. Hey, how you doing, Avalonis, man? Hope you're kicking some butt today. I wrote down your your weapon, and I'm going to get it to you. I'll probably uh, fly over to Rocktopia and catch you over there this week, too. I'm going to cover this planet more, but I have time to fly back and forth. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. Oh, yeah, no, I, I know. You told me I didn't even have to worry about it that much, but I want to make sure to make get it to you this week. I'll catch you on Rocktopia. I like Rocktopia. I could shoot over there, kick it for a couple hours and stuff like that. I'm not that worried about it, man. Today I want to get this covered and stuff like that. Then I want to fly back here and cover some mobs and stuff, take a few codexes. But uh, I'm working my way all the way around the planets with this with this uh, specific blueprint. And I also might run some others. I'm kind of debating on that right now.
Okay, Listerian Blueprint, that's pretty dang common, guys. I probably mix bag on if I would sell this or run it. They do sell. Um, they're easy to run, though. And there's a chance you pop some pretty good stuff. So I'm always mixed bag. There's a whole bunch of these that even though they would sell, they pop okay stuff. And that's probably why they would sell. And so, uh, like all blueprints, it's, it's always either TT food or do I want to keep this or do I want to sell it? You know what I'm saying? Very struggling.
Okay, so the iron texture, I don't really believe it's that valuable. The insane thing is that we're barely to the 50% mark. Yeah, I keep these most of the time, these iron ones. They're basic mineral extractors in iron, which isn't that expensive. And you can just run them. It's a third tier blueprint. You're more likely to get something good from something like that. And so that's that's the kind I'd likely more or less keep and just run sometime.
Meet official, man. We're not negative like that, man. He was letting me know he's on Rocktopia because he claimed a prize earlier and stuff like that. But I hope you're doing well. Were you kicking butt? Are you doing well in the game? I hope so. I'm always rooting for you guys to be doing well. I know a lot of people have been grabbing up those dang tokens. I'm going to be honest, guys. I've only got one of those tokens. I haven't been aggressively hunting for them. I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm just kind of relaxing playing, though. So it's easier to do well when you're not all trying to, you know, chase... Oh, that's not bad. And you're just relaxing playing, right? I see some people are like seriously putting a lot into it. I'm like, I don't even, I, I mean, I, I hope it works out for them. I hope they're very valuable. But at this point, I like to just have fun and enjoy the game. So, But I have got one anyway and it was hunting something like normal so it doesn't seem like you have to be like attacking the game with thousands of dollars to get one or two you know what i mean but it does seem like there's some people putting some serious cash into it oh yeah i love fallout fallout's an excellent game by the way this one i don't know if i do have this is this is at this planet blueprint and so we'll look. Hold on one second. Arcadia. Try to remember where my Arcadia blueprints are. Oh, guys, I got a new blueprint I didn't have. Holy crap. That never happens. I haven't tried New Vegas yet. So honestly... I'm considering trying New Vegas. I've never tried it yet. Do you like it a lot? So many people keep telling me really good things about New Vegas. I'm feeling I'm missing something. I've never played it. Well, I'm going to probably try it, just to be honest. I'm going to have to get it. I'm going to have to prepare me for it. I'll let everybody know. Maybe that's what we'll be doing on Friday. I've been waiting for... Uh, Nightingales and Starfield to come out, but they freaking don't know how to uh, to not keep kicking the back the date on everything. It seems like this whole year has just been video games kicking back the date, and then when they put them down, um, they they have the time they're still working on them anyway, and so at this point I'm just like. But I am super looking forward to, to trying out some new things. So you also suggest the New Vegas. Everybody and their dog has told me New Vegas is actually one of the better ones. And I've never played it. And so I probably will try it. Fallout uh, 64. You mean 76? Uh, New Vegas is dope. Yeah, I've done four. I didn't do the early, early ones, but I would totally do New Vegas. Everybody said too much nice stuff about it, so I kind of expect it's probably one of the stronger ones. And they said it's more standalone. Like, too many people, and I really like 4, okay? But a lot of people have gave me feedback that 4 was just like them puking out stuff from previous games and that there wasn't anything original with it which i'm not i don't know if that's true um or not because i didn't play every single other one of them so i can't be like oh there's nothing original about it 
But my understanding is that the new Vegas one is straight up a good, if you had never played the series, it's standalone enough it's on its own anyway. Tons of people have asked me to play it. This guy has a, a good texture on it. I can't remember which texture it is. Yeah, that's what everybody else says, is that Fallout 4 was generic. I had a blast in Fallout 4, guys. Like, straight up, I played the crap out of it. I mean, I can get how it was generic, but I didn't play enough of the other ones, so it was kind of newish to me. Um, yeah, I really liked it, straight up. I haven't played Fallout 2, see? Maybe I'm going to just dedicate my uh, Friday to playing through all the Fallout oldies. That would take me a year, right? You guys think? I'm pretty sure it take me some amount of time. By the way, we just passed over the two-thirds one done. Can you believe we have this many freaking blueprints? So in the first 500, though, I had this nine blueprints already. Second 500, boom. So this is much closer than normal. So this is already a much better than normal blueprint run. Because I was expecting nine blueprint pops for the whole run. Just for everybody's. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to, yeah. So I, the challenge eventually in Fallout 4 and stuff like that was not not where I wanted and the fact that they wouldn't let me kill that Liberty robot really annoyed me a little bit too like once you get it up and going and actually take out the um, my god my brain's just not working for me right the second the sense you know what I'm saying uh, you can't kill Liberty the robot I didn't think that that was is dead space really that good so can I tell you the one I did look at Dead Space and maybe I should have tried playing it. Uh, the one I really have been waiting for is that Starfield game, but they keep on making it like it was supposed to come out on 11 11. And then they're like, "Nah, we we're just joking. And now not only do they not have I mean, I don't even have a freaking idea what day it's going to come out. And the other one is Nightingales, which isn't as much of a popular push one. But I like the idea of portals and little dimensions and stuff like that. And all kinds of random places to go. And so I'm, I don't know, I'm looking at all kinds. But nobody that puts out games has actually got their crap together, it seems like, lately. And I don't know, maybe maybe that industry really, it's that rough to find dudes that want to put out kick-butt games that people want to play. It just would be nice. I might have to try Dead Space. It looked like a really interesting game, though. I'm wanting some that's challenging, that has, like, depth to it, and has parts of the game that at least 60% of people aren't going to beat it. Not because they make it like, oh, this is so monotonous that it takes forever um, to beat, but because it's that good of a challenge rating. You know what I'm saying? I don't like it where they're like, oh, we made this mission line super monotonous. Only 5% of people will give a crap. I don't want a monotonous. I want a high challenge rating mission. I don't even want it to be mission contingent on the game completion. But I'm okay with some side material that is at a challenge rating that not everybody will beat it. Like... In fact, I'd prefer if half the people playing aren't going to be able to beat it. Because that makes it where it's worth beating it. But this stuff where they put out games right and left to where 100% of people can just stomp 100% of it. Literally makes it where it's not challenging enough by the time you've played it for a little bit. 
I remember in Fallout 4, once I was over, it depended on the level, but I only played Survivor mostly, and legitimately, there was, at one point, you could take out anything with your bare hands, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, EVE Online, I missed the curve on EVE Online, to be honest. Um, and that that's the only reason I don't switch to anything like that. And the amount of time that it takes to put into games like that to be able to actually get anywhere. I know how many hundreds and hundreds of hours I have into Entropia to be able to actually have my avatar up to being able to do anything. And... Um, Eve Online, my understanding, it, it would take me tons of money and tons of time just like this. And I've already stabbed my shelf. Yeah, and it looks good. Like, straight up, it looks good. But I don't want to split myself to another game at this point. But I did look at Eve when it first came out. It just looked like a solidly good game. But honestly, when it first came out, it they made it look better than it was. It now is kind of how they portrayed it when it first came out. You know what I mean? But it did look like an excellent game. And right now, it looks like an amazing universe for the people that already established themselves in it early. I think you guys know that this Tesla pod blueprint is my favorite one for the, you know, limited. So we're getting a whole crap load of almost all these limited ones are generic. Hey, this would pop on Calypso just so you guys know. Yeah, I want a space game. I want it to be more challenging than, than they are most of the time. And in all honesty... I super, super liked um, the settlement building aspect. Supposedly, Starfield is going to have settlement building in it and stuff like that, which honestly, I appreciate. A lot of people, I guess, don't really give a crap about settlement building. I like building forts and settlements in games. I think it's fun. I also, though, like crafting, and a lot of people don't craft in games. And in almost every game I've ever played, I, I end up with a crafter, and so I don't know. Not every game, because some of the games I've played I, I, are just straight PvP games. And there's not really a lot of crafting you do in that, but... Short of those... You guys, I'm kind of shocked to see so many people doing stuff on Arcadia. A lot of times Arcadia has been not the most populous planet. And so it's nice seeing people up on here. Well, while we've been doing this, just so you guys know, I've been... Designing a 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons Thay Necromancer Riz, Wizard of the Red Wall Rose type. I mean, Red Red Wizard of Thay. I apologize. My my words just like tumbled over each other. It was kind of tragic. Been very fun. I don't know if any of you guys play old-fashioned pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons. But frickin' man, I would like it if, if somebody would create a world that's not Dungeons and Dragons, you know what I mean? Like a space world, right? Where you and all your friends could go and play. Where you all could have spaceships, all could set up colonies and stuff. But it had as much character customization as like Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 like level. Do you know what I'm saying? In fact, maybe even more more extreme than that. 
in which like nobody has the same crap nobody has the same guy more of a everybody's more unique where there's stuff where you can do independently and on your own as a character but tons of stuff that's just at the level that you have to have an organized plan and a group of people honestly uh not like wow exactly at all actually but you know how WoW has just an immense amount of raid content and stuff? And that's not my game of a cup of tea. I played it a couple times a long, long time ago. And uh, it was fun, but it was a little bit too fantasy cartoony for me. But I do respect the level of their open worldiness and how they set some of the stuff up. Mutant Chronicles, Space Pen and Paper. I've never played that. I'll write it down now. So, have you ever played Advanced Dungeons, the, the D20 Advanced? So, I'll tell you what. I'm going to look at this Mutant Chronicles. I love space stuff. So, once in a great while, I'll do a campaign where it's a Gestalt campaign. You know how you're going to mix two different classes in a Gestalt campaign. And basically, you take the best... Um, saves and attack bonus and then you get the uh, special abilities from both and the skill points basically and stuff or the skills so basically if you combine gestalt with future campaigns and it mixes to where you end up having like a starfighter wizard or a whatever else you can combine it absolutely makes an absolute, just amazing game. I, my, I would have to check on Cyrene. I left all the blueprints on Cyrene, on Cyrene. But I'm going to be back to Cyrene. I had a very good plan. I could check it though later on and, and see. But I honestly don't know. Isn't a bonding liquid one one of the common blueprints? I'm not not a million percent sure on that, but I would hope it is. It's used in crap loads of stuff, guys. I'll have to check because I really don't know at this point. I I kind of left without organizing my stuff off that planet. Because I bought a bunch of stuff on Cyrene for the purposes of going back there and finishing what I'm doing and getting the rest of my skills out of the materials I'm doing. Because I need to get my tailoring skill up, not for an actual reason that makes any sense, but I bought a bunch of material for the tailoring daily and I was planning on working up some of my skills there. I really like Cyrene, you guys. I'm a, I'm a Cyrene person almost all the time. But I'll check. I'll find out. Let me write that down, too. I'm always writing down stuff. It's kind of interesting. If you guys haven't been to Arcadia, by the way, it's the only planet where you can um, do treasure hunting and stuff. I don't know if I agree with that, actually, but it is what it is. The other thing, what do you guys think about the, the land plot thing? And I'll talk to you about that in one second. Hold on. Here's another Supra blueprint. You guys, does anybody need this? These Supras, the Sopra Blueprint, it is really good at popping stuff on other planets. It's one of the ones that I use for exploratory blueprinting, just so you guys know. But what I was going to ask, you know how they took the Calypso land deeds and they put them into the, um, the basic electronic stock market system? But then they issued out the land dude holders all one of those plot deed things or a plot something. 
because they're planning on developing the plot stuff eventually. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I want them to have land plots on planets. But do you guys think it's worth securing one of those land plot deeds now? Do you guys know what I'm talking about also is the next question. And I'm not trying to be mean there. The only reason I know is because I had a... Well, I have a friend, not had. One of my friends owned a considerable amount of those deeds. And I'm, I'm not like a normal like... Their strategy is very much about deeds. In fact, my God, if I would have been near as good about that the deed strategy as them... I wouldn't ever, ever contribute to this game in any way because I'd have so much money flowing from deeds that it wouldn't matter. I mean, like, legitimately, they don't put money in at all. At all. And so what happens is uh, they cashed out his deeds and now he has crap loads of those plots. And all his deeds are now uh, digital shares. So... Um, I, I don't know what I think about those plots. He has a crap ton of them now, though. Like, on a, like, a bunch. I'll show you them in the thing. People are already selling them and stuff. Uh, the only reason I'd want a plot is if you can use your plot to set up a booth somewhere or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can redeem out a plot certificate on a land piece to set up a booth somewhere... I'm all about getting some of those ahead of time. But there's not some kind of official, this is our plan that I know of. Unless you guys have seen an official plan on this. And then that'd be super nice. Because I'm kind of trying to figure out what I think about them. I, I could buy any of the uh, stock market part. I hope they don't shut us down on this. Let's go here. Go to exchange. They just put it in here, right? Yeah, see, now it's part of the Calypso Land Deed Trust, right? So these are 33 pet apiece. Man, did the guys that owned those make out like a bandit or what? I'm pretty sure these guys made out like a bandit. Didn't they get like 100 shares per each land deed they owned? Were the land deeds worth 3,300? I don't know. Guys, I don't know how much money these guys made that owned the land deeds. But they got cashed out 100 units per each land deed they owned, my understanding is. And then on top of that, they also got issued a plot deed for each one of these that they got cashed out on. Now, obviously, I didn't have any of that stuff, or I would have a bunch of credits on there. I have other stuff, but, you know, not significant amounts. I have insignificant amounts. My buddy, man, dude, he has, oh, man. I, I totally went the wrong way on my strategy a little bit compared to him on that. I'm going to just tell you guys the truth. Here's a burlap sack uh, blueprint. Check, I have this one for sure. Yeah. We're killing it on blueprints, you guys. But I think that they all got issued land deeds. Or land plot. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure and I know. No, they did. Because nobody would have just fibbed about that. So those plot deeds, nobody knows how they work yet. And so, like, what's the, what's the deal with them? Are they worth buying? Do we want to obtain plot deeds now early? Well, nobody has a use for them. And hope that Mindark has a brilliant plan for these plot deeds. What's you guys' thoughts on the plot deeds? Are we speculators? Or are we short on plot deeds? Let's look at the price on them when we're done with this. Honestly, because it's a brand new market, it's probably going to be uh, hypey. You know what I mean? 
I don't know if we should be touching it for a second. Are you guys thinking we're making money on this run? We've done so well. I mean, I, I don't know if that's that's a real what happened here. I just like to think positive. But I'm really trying to decide if those plot deeds are going to be a big deal or not. Because, guys, you if they're going to go up, um, it's going to be after they have some kind of usability. And in all honesty, they're because they just popped, I think that they're probably overpriced right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting to see. Let's track them for a couple days and see if they start trajectorying in some way. You know what? I'm not naughty enough to start doing stock analysis on this stuff where we start like tracking like 50 day moving averages and like a 20 day and uh, you know some kind of moving average configuration. Seriously, you can learn a lot from watching that kind of stuff. I don't do that because that would turn this game into more of a th not a game. You know what I'm saying? It's just true. You could totally track and be like, hey, I'm not going to. But if you were tracking like 20, 50 day and probably like a 10 day moving average and not even maybe yeah 10 days probably fine you would be able to see stuff going on and you'd be able to be like nah the downward trajectory on this is sustained this many days under the 50 day moving average and blah 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 and after watching it for so long You'd be able to interpret the movements of the moving averages and stuff like that. And there's other things you could add into it to where you'd be able to really know what was going on intimately and make better decisions. But at that point, I could just be sitting there watching the stock market, which I do sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And that would make this game not a game, but more or less just playing a market. Which is fun, but we're probably, I'm not trying to turn my video games into market analysis. Myself. For any of you guys, if you're like hardcore and you're feeling like doing that, seriously, it'd be easy as crap to do. On any of the markets within this game, by the way. And on top of that... You could track all kinds of funny stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. But I'm just saying that somebody could probably get out of hand. Because there's multiple markets, right, within the game. You wouldn't want to track them all, for sure. You'd want to track probably the deeds market. You know, the financial instruments themselves. And maybe a couple... Oh, pretty much the financial instruments themselves. Maybe a couple other things, but I'd have to really think about it. But then, that doesn't sound as fun as just playing the game, right? That's what I think, too. Guys, we're freaking flying through this. I really like pen and paper, like, role-playing games. They're just so much funner. I'm And I'm not just trying to talk smack about the computer creators. But computer worlds, like, after you've played them for so long, the there's no undiscoveredness to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, in Dungeons & Dragons or in a, like, D&D uh, &D, type scenario where a DM is just telling a story there's a richness to an always you don't know and uh, in video games 
that vanishes too fast and it's it's okay you get a really good experience and they are able to convey a ton of, in a video game it's just if you've ever played with a good dm or something like that it's just not the same like just not at all the same and in pen and paper like games the richness of the development of the character is just always just so much better i don't know why but you just make a a character that is their their own self and you can make a pretty customized character in a video game and stuff but they have not got there yet i mean they're getting there though definitely it's it's evolving it's a heck of a lot better than when you were like those two little bars on the tennis game on atari and stuff you know what i'm saying that's nice But I, I super like the, just the creative aspect of pen and paper games still. And the kicking it and visiting with people, hanging out. I mean, that part's different than online games. I mean, when you're kicking it and you're having a good old session, it's just very social. I like that. I guess a land party is probably similar. I don't really know a lot of land party people, guys. In fact, are land parties still a thing besides like when they organize them for like events in like Vegas and stuff like that? Do, do like normal people still get a hold of a long time ago when I was younger? Straight up. I'd have buddies come hang out, spend the night. We'd all set up computers, and we'd whip the tar out of, like, tons of games. The one that probably I had the biggest parties kicking butt on was, um... Oh. Yeah... Cyberpunk 2077 looked really amazing. And I didn't jump on it very fast. And then it got such negative tear up that it kind of shocked me. I actually, I, I didn't play it. But I was shocked that it got trashed so bad. I, I didn't think it looked that bad. I watched one of my buddies play it because I'd go over and hang out and visit. And uh, he was having a blast on it. But can I tell you, like, within, like, week one or so, he was exploiting the crap out of that game. And that game, like, for a hardcore gamer, it seemed like if you knew what you were doing, you had it down, like, fast. Like, he had it down fast. And I'm not sure if everybody did. But it didn't look that challenging the storyline was kind of interesting, but kind of like, uh, I didn't catch it all though. I got bits and pieces of it. And so, I don't know. I might play that game one day too, just for fun. I like random stories. I for sure, though, would go back and play through the Fallout series just to play through the whole Fallout series at this point. So do you think that they're going to do another Cyberpunk, but they'll do a better job on it? Because if they're going to do another Cyberpunk, but do a better job, I would probably start from the beginning on a new one. I just kind of wonder, are they going to actually kick its butt? I like those kind of games. When I was younger, though, I played Shadowrun, which is very like, Sh like Cyberpunk. Um, and Shadowrun was super freaking fun. And so... I almost played it just over the when I was a kid playing Shadowrun type thing. Shadowrun, though, if you guys know, 
system wise was super over freaking complicated you the guy that designed the system for shadow run i don't know if he could have made a more complex system but that game was seriously legendary as crap fun like holy crap street samurais and like corporate mages and stuff like that i really had a blast with that like they need to actually make a cohesive shadow run universe to where there's all the dragons and stuff like that i think it would go over well i would play it but i would be very hesitant on their ability to pull that off but just the diversity of characters from street dogs to like street samurais and shamans and stuff like that it was super cool game magic and technology fused it was epic Yeah, Shadow Run was legendarily ahead of its time. Can I tell you? They totally called the 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 drone warfare stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hey, thank you very much, Crazy. Uh, you know, with the uh, uh, riggers and stuff. Like, just just let's be honest. Shadow Run was 100 percent by the way we're almost done so I, I clicked the thing back up shadow run was so far ahead of its time like it is not even funny like not even funny at all by the way i want to show you guys this of this is my dnd stuff i got this this weekend this is legitimately a dungeons and dragons cookbook okay like check this out it has like different chapters with actual food okay i know what you guys are thinking that's insane i'm super excited about this i'm actually probably really going to actually make some of these or start cooking through this and putting the videos on my youtube channel I don't, that's what i'm thinking um, but i'm super excited about this it's like random food but they break it down to like different types of chapters to where it's like, I don't know. Basically, they, they, they got me to buy stuff. No, I don't know about Shadowrun Returns. Man, maybe I should just be asking you guys about games. Hold on. I love Shadowrun, though. That was one of my favorite games I ever played. So, games that are even better than D&D &D but didn't make it as well as D&D &D did. Earth Dawn. If you guys don't know about Earth Dawn, Earth Dawn didn't make it. They had a thing called the Step Dice System and stuff like that. Holy crap. Immense game massive amount of stuff great storyline like honestly a tragedy that it didn't make it i can't remember which game company was creating earth dawn but earth dawn and shadow run are interlinked like earth dawn is uh, a different time period of the great scourge or the purge type thing it's fascinating yeah i would super like it if they would actually get their crap together and make a giant explorable with your buddies is is um shadow run returns uh a everybody has a shadow running character and we all get to go kick the crap out of stuff together 
Or is it a st I build my own party? I like party games too, by the way, where I get to control a whole freaking party. I'm going to have to be checking this out. Guys, I'm feeling some... Plus, my coffee kicked in. Like, super kicked in. Like... I was thinking my coffee wasn't even phasing me at all. And, um... Oh, I like strategy games. I'm cool with that. I haven't played the Fallout 1 and 2, but maybe I'm going to just pull all these games and throw them on our Friday... Retro day or something. I don't know. I have to figure out what I'm doing on Fridays. I love strategy games, though. They're usually a blast. And they eat time. Like, if you're sitting there playing a good strategy game, like, time just goes poof. And you're like, it's 2 in the morning. Like, holy crap. Especially some of those... those those um, base builder ones and stuff like that. Those are super, super naughty, man. Those things you can get into just doing a base builder strategy game forever. And like the day's gone. And it doesn't seem like it. I actually kind of think that's neat. But holy crap. How fast time goes is just insane. I mean, it's nice if you're trying to just make time go poof. So I'm not going to diss it. We got a lot of blueprints, you guys. Including, I actually got a new one somewhere in here. This one. Maybe. I don't know. Look at that. We even got another blueprint right there. And they're like, hey. Okay, so we're going to look at this. Obviously, we can only see 1,000 clicky clicks back. Because they only let you do that. Here's the statistics on it. It cost 120 ped to do. We got 42.9. That's actually above what we should. Normally it's 42.5 guys. So we're doing really good on that. Oh we got our butt kicked. Guys. Got our butt kicked. Let me find a calculator. Somewhere. You know what. There's one on here. Hold on one second. Let's find out how bad we got our butt kicked. I'm just trying to find a calculator. Well, I don't have one on this phone. I'm going to grab my phone where we have a calculator. Because that's not fun at all. I like not being able to figure out what we're at. So I got my butt kicked, though, because it's 120 ped. I'm also going to further kick our butt because we're actually going to cash that into ourselves. I'm not counting the, how much we got returned in the markup on what we got returned because, in all honesty, I don't like to count that. I like to just, like, did we TT come ahead with markup of whatever? Uh... Oh, I don't feel bad. We're good. We, I come out ahead so often on stuff that I'm not that worried about it. Let's see, 95.28, 120. We got a 79% return, so almost 80%. Now, I will let you guys know I'm going to nuke us out a little bit more than that. I'm going to also put this up in here. And I'll show you how I'm going to nuke us out. i got to find the right set. Okay, that one. Okay, no. Oh, it doesn't even matter, you guys. I'm okay with losing a little bit. We just got two new blueprints. I never get new blueprints, hardly. And so, just new blueprints is rare enough for me that I'm okay with it. Let's see, dun, 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 dun. 
Okay, everything else is normal. Rest tree. Does anybody need a Sopra stone texture or something like that? I don't feel I need to. All right, I have all the rest of these. Okay, so here's what we do now. Okay, so we find wherever the um, technician is. Go into technician, sell. I don't know why I thought that was open. Now I'm going to go in here. We're going to buy a limited one. Has to be a limited one. Boom. Now the reason why is because we're getting at 95% of what we put, or 90% of what we put in, back immediately. I'll show you what's happening. The only reason we're doing this is because I find the skills for this more valuable than selling it. And I'd rather level this up slowly as a texture. If you guys see, we got 3.5 points in fashion design and 3.19 in texture pattern matching. Those are skills that you only get if you actually do it. They're really expensive skills to get. The rest of the money came back to us in this form. See what I'm saying right here? 33 pad, 39 pack, blah, blah, blah. And so you get most of it back. Obviously, we're already building up stuff on this planet. And so as you can see, I'm planning on doing a few things on this planet. It won't just be this. Next time, we're going to be hunting, not um, crafting a thing. I don't know exactly what we're hunting yet. It'll probably actually be a robot. Does it not look like there's a lot of people on this planet for right now? It's kind of shocking me. Sometimes I've landed on this planet, and it's like the cricket planet. This is literally some of the most amount of people I've seen on this planet for a while. It's absolutely a good thing to see, and it's healthy for the galaxy to, to have more people doing this stuff. Um, of course, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Real quick, before I do go, I'm going to go ahead and get us switched over to somebody else doing Entropia Universe, of course. I'm going to check out all the stuff you guys said. Because, honestly, it takes me a second to check out that much stuff. I do want to try out some new games, for sure. Um, also, on top of that, I want something that has a good storyline and is challenging. I don't know who this is. But we're going to cross our fingers. It look, oh, he's hunting stuff for sure. I like that. I know what he's doing. He's in the swamps by Fort Lahore. And he's about to kill a whole bunch of these dudes. And have to fight a big monster. Just so you guys know. At least I think that's what he's doing. Congrats to him when he, he globals. Peace. Very best wishes. And thank you guys very much for hanging out.